Welcome back. Thank you once again for hanging out with us. This is the one and only IT in the D Show. I'm your host, Bob Walton Spiel, hanging out with co-host, producer extraordinaire, Randy Walker. Guest this week isn't really a guest. He's an old friend. He's been part of the show for many, many, many years. Nuri Gojai is in the house, formerly the FNG. He's earned his stripes. We're going to be talking about this new AI wearable cell phone that he's enamored with. We're going to be talking about Burning Man. We're going to be talking about reInvent. Uh, we're going to be talking about all these good things. Neri, how they treat you? Um, it's a mixed bag. Uh, my life has uh, fallen apart since I left IT in the D, but you know, overall pretty good. Well, you know what? You can pick it back up if you can find us online at itinthed.com. Do us a favor. Give us a like on the socials. Subscribe to us everywhere. Fine podcasts are sold. And don't forget Eastern Palace Club on the 21st. We're going to be there Thursday from 5 to 8. Uh, no cover, no speakers, just a bunch of IT folks hanging out uh, pre-Christmas and uh, Hanukkah and all that celebration. So, um, yeah, welcome home. You're just in South Africa. That's bizarre. Um, not many people are, are, can say that uh, in any given year. How was that? Uh, it's, it was really great. I, uh, had a, a rare opportunity to fly down and visit my team. I've got a team down there and I went down for our company holiday party and we went out to the wine regions in South Africa. Uh, it's beautiful. It's, it's prettier than Napa. It's prettier than Sonoma. Absolutely gorgeous wine region. And we had an absolute blast. Got in on a Thursday and, uh, left on a Sunday. So it was kind of crazy, but overall I, uh, I had a blast, a, a really good time. I heard uh, I've heard nothing but good things from anyone who's ever been down there. Um, yeah, it's um, it, it's a really strange juxt- juxtaposition because if you were just to look around, it kind of feels like Southern California. I could have sworn I was in San Diego, but it's also kind of Africa at the same time. Like it's a very interesting place. Uh, mountains are beautiful. The ocean is beautiful. Um, lots of art going on in South Africa right now. So that it's like a, an art scene and a food scene. What's it's, the food like? Uh, Cape Town's a really interesting blend of kind of a, it's very international. I was going to say it's very melting pot. Yeah, it is, but they, they produce some of the best vegetables in the world there in South Africa. So everything was super fresh and incredibly delicious. A lot of folks just having a really great time with food. Like the, the seafood is incredible. Like you've probably had yellowtail sashimi before, right? But they pluck yellowtail right out of the ocean there and they cook it. So like just lots of really incredible fish, incredible vegetables. Like I, I had an absolute blast there. Nice. Um, we talked a few weeks ago and you're like, Bob, I need to come on the show. I need to talk about this thing. <laughs> and I'm like, what is it? And I'm like, you said it's a wearable cell phone with AI built into it that can shoot an image on your hand. And I go, that sounds horrible. <laughs> and I went online and I looked it up and it's still horrible. And I know you're in love with this. Randy's shaking his head that it's horrible. Oh boy. Like, please explain to us about this technology and where do you think it's going? Cause, because you know, like I, right now, I mean, I like, how am I going to play clash Royale on a, on a non screen wearable shoot digital on hand cell phone? Well, I mean, for, first of all, I'm not sure I'm in love with it. Like at, at first I was really enamored with it. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. And then the more I thought about it, the more I'm not sure. So basically there's these two ex Apple executives. One worked on, as a program manager on the iPhone and the iPad. The other was basically working on human design and they've created this device that is basically meant to break us from our screens. You know, you, you look around everywhere in the world, everyone is just sucked into their screens. And well, no, we have our small one, which is my cell phone in my hand. I have my medium one, which is my laptop right in front of me. And I have the big one, which is the TV showing Monday Night Raw right now. So, I mean, that's, yeah, we're enamored with we're, we Yeah, but I mean, like, you, you go out to dinner and, like, your friends are sitting there on their phones the entire time. Nah, nah I mean, only, I mean, not at my age. I mean, I guess younger generation, sure, but, uh, you know. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Like, you know, my daughter, I'm just looking at my daughters when they go out, I'll, I'll, I'll be sitting in a circle and they stare at their phones. So the alternative so of I, staring at a screen is just talking into the air all the time. Yes. <laughs> or talking to people, Randy, like well, imagine that. 
Yeah. So I thought this would be an interesting way to, to break us from that, right? Like, why am I looking at my cell phone? On an average day, I'm reading the news. I'm reading my messages. I'm calling. I'm on Slack because I'm mobile, things like that. And is there a way to to get us out of that to reduce our screen dependency? And I don't know if this device will ever replace a screen. You have to have its own phone number. Uh, it's through the T-Mobile network. And I think it's like 20 bucks a month or so. And it basically has access to all this generative AI. So you can ask it questions. You can have it summarize your messages. Like it seems like a really interesting way to break yourself from that screen. And when you do need the screen to actually look at something, kind of hold your head up in front of your face and it, it laser projects an image on your hand. And apparently the speakers are meant to like confine you in a bubble. So uh, the more I think about using this, the more I'm not sure because are we going to be just in a place where we're walking around talking to ourselves? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm in. Now where does the now where does the AI component come into this? Because I get it, but I don't get it. But I want to get it, but it makes no sense to me. Like where there's where, a like, really. If you're just saying like call Nuri and then it calls you, that's not AI. That's Siri. You know. I'm no, but like they, there was an amazing tech demo, and I think this is what really got me started on it. Was basically it's like I need to set up a meeting with Bob. We need to find a place for lunch, and it knows your dietary restrictions and your preferences, so it can suggest a restaurant to have dinner at. Or I may have ten text messages from Randy, and it's like summarize my inbound text messages or my emails. And it will summarize the important stuff for you, right? So I think that was really interesting. They did a demo where the guy held up a, a hand of, of almonds and it's like, how many calories are in these almonds? Like it's, it seems like it could be a very interesting, you know, it's like Siri versus Alexa kind of on steroids. And that was kind of interesting. Except of, you like can't yourself. apparently oh, trust its little. answers at all because the handful of almonds, it was off by at least a factor of two in how much protein was in that handful of almonds. Is that going to change you eating it or not? It depends on no, why you're almonds. using it. If you have <laughs> dietary restrictions, you know, you can only eat so much sugar or something a day. If it tells you there's less sugar in it than there is, you could be going into a diabetic coma. Fair. I mean, yeah. so I understand. So like I, I sent my daughter this thing. It's a basically listens to lecture and then it does look kind of like the, Hey, summarize this for me and come up with possible test questions. Um, and again, the hallucinate, you know, I kind of said, Hey, do you, you know, she's been having an issue like um, with no taking and whatnot. I'm like, is this good? Would this help? She's like, no, I don't trust it. I don't, the hallucinations thing. So are we just, are we not there yet with the, with the, with the LLM, with the language models? Um, are we, is this too early, I guess, for, to even break some break ground on anything like this? I don't know. I think it's a, a step in an interesting direction because there, there has been a backlash against wearables, as you know, like if we think back to well, the Google glass days, glass holes. Called glass holes, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like will wearing this pen be something similar? Like, and do you really want to wear this little, like, is it like a one inch by one inch thing on you all the time and carry around extra batteries for it and all the things like, I don't, I, I don't know if we're ready yet for the wearable era. See, now it's funny now that the Google glasses makes more sense now than it ever did. And I'm sure they will never, they'll, they're, they're done with it. They're, they'll never do it ever again. Um, but at the same token, yeah, is it, is it more or less the scarlet letter? Like, uh oh, you know, because it's recording constantly. Like, you know, what happens if we got you know three uh, three fingers of whiskey in our belly and I'm running my mouth and this thing's always on? Like, I don't want to be I don't want to be around you. Yeah, they they say there's no wake word, which is interesting. Like, just I'm, like I'm no, 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 just like your OK Google thing. Because remember, remember when Jessica was yelling for Aerosmith? I'll never forget that episode. And it was she showing- loves fat bottom girls, and so she yells like, oh, "Hey, do we play fat bottom girls?" And I'm like, "Stop it! I'm laying in bed." Like, but the recording yeah. was, "Hey Google!" Like, so it was always recording. There was no, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I wonder about that. They they say that there's a little privacy light on it that like turns on when it's recording video. But like, do you want to be around someone whose video is always recording? I mean, your cell phone's technically listening, right? Um, you want to take a cruise to Maui? You want to take a cruise to Maui? You want to take a cruise to Maui? Now check your phone. Now check your <laughs> my, phone. my Google just said something. Like it, it was definitely, I think I must have said, okay, Google. <laughs> did you ever hear did you hear the guy that um i think it was alexa i don't know if it was google or alexa but he said um he basically said alexa fart and then it said no whisper and it's like and then she's like do you like that one is that squeaky and like it sounded he's like oh you filthy and he made her keep doing, and i'm like it was one of the funnier videos i've ever seen in my life because that you know that's the one thing um my daughter that was her first amazon or her first purchase was the expansion fart pack on the Alexa. So got a dollar ninety nine email um going, yeah, next let's turn off uh let's talk, talk turn off verbal purchases. But again though, my favorite thing with the with the Google glasses was if you ever see with anyone on it, just go Google Im- image search diarrhea a thousand times. Like <laughs> if they see you wearing this thing, like if they see you wearing this thing, can't they yell at it and manipulate it? Like how is it is it or it, it can't just respond to you. It's like send mom a text message and say that I'm coming out of the closet or something like there's <laughs> like all kinds of potential badness in that. Um, I don't I don't know what they're doing for voice security. That's an interesting thing. The The tech demo showed where they were actually live translating a conversation, which is amazing. Like I think we've always, you know, we think about the the communicator that can uh, what's is it uh Hitchhiker Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that had the device that allowed basically any translation from any language. Was that yeah yeah absolutely right? Yeah. yeah. So it didn't just translate it, but it spoke back with the speaker's like intonation and it sounded like his voice. Like there's some really cool things that LLMs are doing right now with translation. So I, I don't, I don't know what security is like, but I think that's an interesting thing to bring up. Because if I ever saw you with it, you know damn well I'm screaming at you. You know I'm screaming. At you. I'm just saying. Play fat bottomed girls. Exactly. It or seems worse. like an interesting proof of concept, but I don't think there's a product here yet. Like I have to have a new phone number. I have to have another subscription. I have to have a different music service because they only work with Tidal. Yeah. Like. Nuri, you know what I would say? Mm. Text Randy, eat my butt. See, I, I could make you text anyone. Like, how could it not? How could it stop it? <laughs> I don't know. And, and Randy, I think you're interesting, right? Because it's like, I can see it as a companion to a cell phone, right? Like, I, I fly a lot on, on airlines, right? Mm-hmm. So I have my Delta app, and my Delta app is my boarding pass. And if I don't have a screen to scan that in, on, am I going to hold my hand out under the boarding pass and hope that it sends enough uh, resolution to actually scan. I don't think it's gonna. So I'm going to have to have a cell phone plus this AI pen. They're on different carriers. Maybe they're maybe not. They're Bluetooth linked. Like, is this going to be a valuable device for my day to day? Or is this just some other piece of tech toy that we're playing with out of San Francisco? Right. And it's $700. Like I, Bob, I hovered my finger over the buy button for like oh. probably 10 minutes. And then I finally decided not to buy it. It just doesn't look that good either. Like it looks like a upright bidet on your chest. <laughs> Did you say bidet? Yeah. Like it's that shape. Like uh and it looks very heavy. Like all of the demos and videos I saw of it, it like droops and hangs off your lapel or drags your t shirt collar down. I thought it was like a Star Trek communicator. Like that's that's what I was like. Ba-doop. Yeah. Uh, LaForge. Like, you know what? I'm just glad that we're not talking about implanting RFIDs into our hands anymore. I'm glad that we're past that. You just need NFTs. People are still out there doing that. Are they? Um, They're not. Yeah. Are they still doing that? Yeah. People it years ago. yeah. Uh, we had a mall from Dangerous Things who was there impl- implanting RFIDs into people. I don't know why not. Like, I'm totally down with it. I mean, is it, you know, that's your uh, uh, Delta pass right there. It's in my hand. Or unlocking your computer. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not ready for none of it. Too many dystopian movies, too many uh, 1984 books. 
So, so what do you think, Bob? Like, is this going to catch on? Is, is screens even a problem? Are we going to, are we trying to solve for a problem that doesn't exist? Is this it? No one's complained about their screens though. I think that's the issue with, you know, like if you look at everything that's transformed and innovative, innovated over the last 15 years in technology, the iPhone, you know, Amazon free shipping, right? Like just completely changed the game. Like this isn't something that anyone's been screaming about. I never saw anyone sitting at a Starbucks going, you know, I wish I could shoot the image onto my hand. And, or I wish I could wear it. You, you know, you follow what I'm saying? Like it's not, I think everyone, everyone has an unhealthy relationship with their phone and they don't, they're, it's right now it's the whoopee. You, if you give it, you can't, you don't want to give it up. There's very few technology detractors that want to give up their, their phone right now. I couldn't imagine anyone under 30 doing it. Do you think it's a problem though? Like, are we spending too much time on our screens or is that? I think the problem lies in all of the kind of crazy documentaries that we've seen about how social media companies um, addict you and that nobody cared about. Like you watch this and you're alarmed, you know, how their algorithms, you know, especially the weird ones. Like the, do you know about the Facebook one where like it basically wanted you to, it got you down a, like a rabbit hole, like a darker rabbit hole. Like the more you click, the worse it got because it got, it brought you in. You know what I mean? It wasn't like puppy dog, puppy dog, and then you're done after two. This was like conspiracy theory. Read, read. Oh, my God, did you see this? And you're like, oh, by the time you're done cl- you know, getting through this, it, you're, you're 12 stages deep into some bizarre because they want to keep you. That was their way to keep you. Oh, I'm sure TikTok does it. I'm sure YouTube does it. Like, I'm sure all I mean, of them do it, right? Right now, it's like, yeah, Instagram reels, the thumb up, thumb up, thumb up. It's all day. You know what I mean? And they know they got you. If if I spend the one thing I got, (laughs) I wish I'd go away on the Instagram reels is the Indian street food where they're like sticking their arms and they're cutting meat with their toenails videos. Oh, it's like, I I got to, I'll send you a couple. No. And all of a sudden my algorithm is free of that kind of stuff. And I (laughs) want to keep it. I'm just, I'm just wondering what Bob clicked on to get to that place. Right. In the I am um, no internet, like world street food is a big thing. I love those things. Like I used to watch YouTube. I still do like food carts and street food from all over the world. It's a hobby of mine, you know, love it. Um, but then I don't know how these got on Instagram, but again, they got you, they're, they're locking you in. Like they, they, they know you. that's, the, that's the, to me, that's the scariest part, but nobody cares. Nobody's fighting it. Hmm. We're, we're so, getting into our, our, you know, our overlords. It's, 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 you know, who's complained? Think, find two people. I'd love to find two people in your circle that have complained. That you know what? That one, that funny video on Instagram was just too much. I just can't anymore. <laughs> you know, like, I, send uh, me more. Well, send me more. I think the worst feature that Apple ever developed was the screen time notifications. I don't know if you have these in Android or not, but it basically tells me it's like you spent on average of four hours and 30 minutes on your screen yeah. every day last week. And I'm like, oh, shit. But you didn't stop. Oh, I turned that off. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> you get them on Android, but I, it doesn't make you stop. You might. You, everyone says, oh, shit. But nobody stops. Nobody stops. So maybe there's something in this pen. Like we we didn't know we needed a screen. Right when Steve Jobs brought out the iPhone on that day, we didn't know we needed this. Nobody was uh, asking it, for it. Yep, it, it completely changed everything. So, what is the next evolution in technology that is going to be that iPhone that's going to completely change the way? Like right now, we see myopically this is how things are, and this is things are always going to be. And like, but where where does that innovate to? Where where do we go from that? I think it's the I think the companion is glasses. It's the translation, it's the um, distance, like for golfers. It, the, I'm just thinking of use cases that for the glasses that tie into the phone with the AI, and, and you know it's kind of like RoboCop lens, right? Or it's like mm-hmm. 
you know, zooms in on this, zooms in on that. Tells you what this is, tells you what that is. Yeah, I mean, like, so the, the augmented reality use case then basically is where you're going with that. Eh, not so much like dinosaurs, like dancing in the streets or anything, but like enhancing. Now, and a little turn left thing pops up in your vision, right? Like, I mean. Precisely. Enhanced everything, you know. And again, it's a choice, but I think once you once you got onto it, I don't think you would leave. I, I genuinely think you wouldn't leave. Hmm. Yeah. Unless I jump up behind you and say image search diarrhea a thousand times. then. then. <laughs> I mean, talking about it, it's almost made me want to go get one just to see what it's like. They they expect that they're going to sell 100,000 units, which, I mean, in the grand scheme of things is not a lot. I think they're only shipping to the U.S. right now. But, like, is being an early adopter something that's going to be pretty cool or is it going to be a piece of tech that I throw in my junk drawer and never use again? It's a. It's going to be a Silicon Valley. Look at me. Look at me. No, look at me. Look at me. Thing. That's really. I mean, and then, you drive and a then, Tesla problem. And then you go look. No, and then you want to show the person next to you at the coffee house, and then they go, "Oh wow!" And then you're done. I think that's really what it's going to boil down to. Ooh, you just shot your text message into your hand with a laser. Do you feel morally superior about yourself now? Look what I can do. It's a look what I can do, and then you're done. Do you remember the last problem? Or the last device that tried to solve the too much screen time problem, the little mini palm phone that you could only get on Verizon that had a subset of apps so that you could call and text, and that was about it. Isn't that called a senior citizen grasshopper phone? Is that what they transitioned it to? It was a no, you had to have a primary smartphone, and then it was like a secondary phone that you could still get your text messages and calls. And oh, it sounds awful. Yeah, I imagine you the original, this pin going you the same way. You, uh, do you remember the original Palm Pilots where you would spend hours importing all your contacts into? And then if it ran out of batteries, you'd lose everything and you had to do it all over again? That's why you no. sync it to your computer. the worst age of technology in the history of humanity. <laughs> you had to sync it to your computer so that if your batteries died, you could at least get the data back after a few minutes. Uh, didn't, you know, nobody did that. Nobody did I that. Did, I did. There, there are no apps on this pen either. Like... You know, we we use our phones for like our personal banking. We use it for commerce. We use it for communications. We use it for video conferencing. We use it for unified communications. Like there's so many things we use our phones for. I don't think this pin can replace. I, I, I can't tell it to join a Slack huddle or a Google Meet or, or two factor open up my Bank of America yeah. app, right? Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how far it's going to go. And that's the thing. Yeah. How many bills do you pay today on your phone? All I mean, of them. Yeah, right. You're going to take that away? Or my insurance card is in my progressive app, right? So like I get pulled over by a cop and now you're holding your hand out with a laser on it for your cop to, to see like, I just, I don't know how we break our dependence on these screens. It's not, we're not, we're nowhere near it. We're nowhere near it yet. I think no. we're just, I had an argument with um, my cousin's, one of his best friends and he was this was eight ten years ago and he was like apps are dead i'm like dude we're not even close to being we're in the infancy you're gonna get an app for this is pre garage door and nest stuff you know what i mean and i'm like no no no, everything's moving there you can see it um but i can't see anything right now like that's you're, you're in the dilemma i can see it in your face you're in the dilemma i am where we can't see what's next now it's not everything's there right yeah. Somebody rings my doorbell and I'm in the bathroom. I get a pop up on my phone saying there's the Amazon delivery driver out there and there's a package detected, right? Like there's motion in my backyard. I get a pop up. Like there's so many physical world things that happen that my phone tells me about through an app. And if a device has no app, I don't know if it's going to be useful or not. Then it's got to be audible. And then what if you don't want it to be audible because you're, you know, in a situation where you don't, you can't listen to it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, they, they, they have these things that on the device they called a personic speaker, which is a combination of personal and sonic. And it's supposed to be something that only you can hear. But realistically, like, are you laying in bed, your partner's there with you, going through your, your work for the day? And you're, are, are you hearing that? Are you, is your partner hearing that? Like, if you're at a bar, is everyone around you hearing that? Like, I plus the other way um, around, nobody can hear what the speaker is saying, maybe, but. Everybody around you is hearing everything you say to the pin. Yeah. 
Yeah, it sounds awful. It's going to die. What's the balance of my USAA account? <laughs> like $212, Nuri. Like, shit. Yeah. It, it may. Like, it may just be an interesting bit of tech that's acquired by somebody or... Again, though, where am I going to stop my uh, my favorite videos right now are the just stop oil protesters and then the angry uh, Europeans get out of the car and drag them by the backpacks and then the people that are protesting scoot on their butts back in front of the truck and this <laughs> goes on for like 20 minutes. Those are my, you know, and where am I going to watch that now? I'm just saying. Oh, speaking of angry protester videos, did you see the one from On the Way to Burning Man this year? Absolutely. I wanted to talk about it. Absolutely. Nice segue. That was one of my favorites. I've never seen this before. Typically, when you have a protester, you know, if they're doing something bad, they might get arrested. No, these cops are like, I'm just driving through your trailer that you set up. And it was, <laughs> and I don't think anyone had any sympathy. And so uh, let me, let me set the stage. So the road to Burning Man is like a tiny two lane road that runs through a bunch of Native American reservations. And there's not much out there. So you're driving, you got mountains on your right, you got mountains on your left. It's mostly desert. And for, I think, about an hour, you see nothing. There's no cities. There's no nothing. There's no turnoffs except ranches. So basically, it's a, a two-lane road to nowhere. So meanwhile, these protesters set up kind of on this two-lane road to nowhere and caused this traffic jam of epic proportions. And they were protesting the um, climate uh, impacts that Burning Man has. And... Um, the, I think they were rangers from is it Washoe County, maybe? Or one of the counties there basically had had enough of it and I think reacted to, to get these protesters out of the way, which I think was pretty interesting. I don't even know. Do you know even know what they were protesting? I know the carbon impacts of Burning Man. Basically, like you're out here having a big ass party, and meanwhile, the world is burning, I think was basically their message. But isn't the point of Burning Man to like feed into on it onto of itself, like to so self sustain? I mean, there's, I mean, the one of the core principles of Burning Man is leave no trace, right? So people sure. take their trash with them um, and uh, is supposed to leave, leave nothing there on the playa. Um, so there is an environmental sustainability bit to Burning Man. Burning Man has a lot of environmental sustainability programs like even for their own staff they sort their trash and compost and all those other good things right so as far as like i hate to call it a festival but as a festival of that size is concerned i think burning man does a really fantastic job at their sustainability efforts they do right. but then you know why protest that go to you know i'm just saying the thousand Coachella or anything for that matter like your daisy carnival or yeah any of them yeah i agree but like, you know, here, here's my take and I'm going to say it over and over again. I don't, I was on the, I was on board with the Canadian truckers until they stopped traffic. I was on board with just about everything. I'm cool with your protest until you stop traffic. Once you stop traffic, I hate everything about you. I hate your cause. Uh, you're, 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 I want to, I want to protest the opposite. You know, I, I guarantee if you go on to YouTube right now and find that video, there are probably hundreds of millions of views, right? Like that's yeah. got to be a very, they, they got their message out. They did what they were trying to do. But you know, I think it's the negative, it's, it's the negative impact. Nobody's looking at it going, well, yeah, I see their point. Everyone's like going, what a bunch of buttholes. Like, <laughs> you know, again, once you block traffic, you know, it's, people are always like, you know, one, I'll never, there's a guy, it's, a, it's in London, and they're doing a Just Stop Oil protest. And the guy's out there going, you're making it worse. Everyone's idling. You're wasting petrol. Like, let them be. Like, what, what are you trying to do? <laughs> and all those people on that two-lane road just idling as well, waiting for the, the yeah. protest to come. Yeah, totally. And they're going to get out of their trucks, and they're going to drink, and they're going to eh, make it a party. Because they're not going to get, you know, yeah, crazy. Um, I still don't know that that's one of the, what I can't burning man makes no sense to me as a human being. Like I understand it and I don't, and I know you've lived it. Um, and I never will. Bob, you should go next year. I'll take you. I'll, I'll take ah, you. There's no way I'm going. Randy, you go too. We can, we'd have a, we got a big old party. It'll be great. Oh boy. I don't know <laughs> if I can handle that. Yeah, I'm not going to. <laughs>
it is, uh, this year was my best year ever. Like the media saw all the pictures of the mud and the people unhappy in the mud. But realistically, I think it was my best Burning Man ever. And I had a moment. I was, I was really angry. I was like, seriously? And then the rainbows came out and we're like, okay, cool. And then it rained again. And then I was like, we had some moments. And yes, it made things difficult. For instance, uh, I have never seen rain out there before. So I was going to say, when does it, how it can't rain very often in an area? Very, very seldomly. Um, and that's what the climate protesters were protesting is climate change. No, I'm kidding. Um, so like we have our generators and our generators we don't cover and we run extension cords and our extension cords are not waterproof. We don't put them in waterproof boxes when we, you know, connect the extension cables together. They're just literally like on the desert floor because we've never had that problem before. You don't bring, you know, you bring your boots, but your boots are more of a, a function of fashion instead of actually like walking around in mud and everything fell apart when it rained. Our generators went toes up because they shorted. Um, our, our toilet was uh, a composting toilet that had electricity involved and it went toes up. We didn't get our water delivery. Like a bunch of things went really weird when it got really rainy because moving around was really difficult. And people tried to get around on their bikes. It was impossible. And the, the ground itself is kind of like concrete. So as you walk in the water, it kind of compounds. And so your boots get more and more layers of mud on it. And so now you've got six inches of boots and probably 20 pounds on each boot. And so it's just, it's really, really difficult to, to get around when it rains. And I don't think anyone was prepared for that. Well, plus you have Nobody's, all the electronic gear, the DJ equipment. The- uh, one, I took two DJ controllers. I got them sitting over here in my office. One of them shorted in the rain. Uh, luckily, it's fine now once it's dried out. But like, it was weird. We covered our speakers. Like, it it just these are things we've never run into before. Dust, we're fine with. We understand dust. We understand heat. We understand yeah. cold. We understand the beating sun, and so we plan for all those things. But uh, just when we thought we had it all figured out, uh, nature had other plans for us. But realistically, we had the best time. Like a lot of camps around us got really disheartened. A lot of folks had their infrastructure ruined. A lot of people's attitudes and moods were pretty bad. Uh, But we decided to throw a party instead. And we had at least 500 people in our yard for 24 hours straight. DJs the entire time. We got rid of our entire collection of booze. We burned off all of our propane and had an absolutely fantastic party at our place there in the mud. And it was Burning Man magic, absolute Burning Man magic. I mean, it goes back to my saying: you got to make the best time, whatever you, whatever's dealt with. To you know, sounds like you did. I, I mean, you would anyway. I mean, I I had a moment. I'm not going to lie, but we did make the best of it. We uh, there's pictures of our camps in the BBC. Uh, there was a CBS interview that uh, they did with our camp over Zoom. We had Starlink, which was pretty great. So we did a CBS interview, and we just. We just all talked about making the best of it. There was no Ebola. There was no cannibalism. Um, there were stories about Chris Rock and Diplo having to hike for like eight miles. Um, I talked to his handler and they said that they were picked up by helicopter. So it was, um, some people made it to be a lot more than it was. And I had a great year. I'm going to go back next year. You should come, Bob. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll figure it out. I'll make you nice and comfortable. Like we rent an RV, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Hey, it's always great to see you. I love spending time with you. It's great to catch up with you. Um, appreciate your insights on that uh, cell phone. That's never going to go anywhere. I'm curious to see where it does lead though. And, and I still uh, may buy one. I still may you buy should, one. You should do a podcast just on burning man. These stories are intru- you're fascinating. Um, I think that's your calling. Yeah. <laughs> Among, amongst other things but hey <laughs> nuri gojai formerly the fng cheers bud love you um thanks again for the time on behalf of uh, bob and randy do us all a favor drink up your drinks get your phone numbers you don't gotta go home you just gotta get the hell out of here see you next week drive careful beat it beat it <laughs>